All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about, instead of doing this, how are we going to use structures to store multiple data? And then we don't have to worry about this array stuff. We will have only one array and that, have, that array will have a structure um, like uh, uh, array of structures, all right? So what I'm going to do, you can create structures anywhere in any file, but I'm gonna create another file, a Swift file, and we're gonna call it um, contact. And in that contact, we will have the details that we want to store about that particular contact, all right? So if I create, if I go here, file, new, <coughs> did, I, did I resume recording? Yeah. File, new, here we create a file, not a Coca Touch file, a Swift file, empty file. And then I'm gonna create next. And this file is going to call contacts, all right? The file name is called contacts. And then I'm gonna create this class, it's empty. And then here I can create my structure. How do we define a struct? Structure, struct, contact. And then we will put all the attributes that we want in that structure. So I have var name. What is the type of that? What is the type of that? String. Then var photo. And then this is going to be a string again. Later on, I'm, you know, if we have time, I show you how to make that data instead of a string. We're just gonna use the image name right now, string. And then the next, the next thing we're gonna use is just description. Details, right? Details. And then again, it's going to be a string. All right. So far, so good. Now, I want to create my own initial list, if you will. I want to create an array of structures that has initial values in it, right? You could do it anywhere. You can do it in this class. You can do it in the other class. Some of the pra good practices is that in here, in the same Swift file, you will create what we call a static function. And that static function would return to you a list or an array of all the structures that you want, like that you want to display. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna say static func get contacts. And then I'm going to return an array of contacts, of contact. All right. Have you used statics before in your object-oriented courses or not? What does a static mean? A static means that you can call this function without having to create an instance. So you can call it directly without the need to create an instance of that object and then call that function, all right? Usually utility classes, they have tons of these static functions, all right? One copy. Static means one copy in your application. Time. What are we going to do? I'm going to say first, uh, you can do it two ways. You can say return. What? 
I'm gonna return the following. An array, why an array? Because I said I need to return an array. Array of what? We need to create instances of these contacts. So you can say contact, awal wahad, and then we need to pass three things. The name, the photo, and the details. So in here, I would say for the first one, I'm going to say the name is Omar. This for the photo, we don't, since we have only one photo, we're gonna use the same one over and over again. All right. And for the details, I'm not a good friend. All right, so that's the first object we created. Then you say the next object, right? Okay, let me do something here. Okay, there was a problem actually. We were defining this static function outside the structure. So that was the error. So I moved it inside the contact structure. All right. So that's the first object. What you can do, you can take this comma copy, command copy, command V, command V, command V, whatever number you want. And then you can give it different names, Omar, Rashid. Rashid, Rashid, uh, Ahmad, we had, and then we had. All right, I'm using my sister's name and my brother's name. <laughs> okay, so now what happens? When we call this function, this would give you an array of contacts. This array of contacts, this function would say return the following. It will create four instances of this contact class, which will include name, photo, and details. All right, now if we go back to the table of view controller, I don't need this anymore. All I need instead of this, we say return contacts equal to what? Equal to that, the Zakharul contact class equal to the function that give me the contacts which is get contacts. So now when I do this, it will give me an array. This array, it will have all these instances in it. So if I go back to the table view controller, I can say here equal get uh, contacts, the name of the structure, contact, dot get contacts. So this will give you now the array. It will give you the array that we need. Instead of creating these arrays here, we created them in the structure. And now I have all, all the information is stored in context. The next thing I need to do is that instead of doing this now, I need to do more. So this one context.index.row will actually give me what? It will give me a contact object. In that contact object, I have all these attributes. So in here, well, instead of just doing this, I need to add more. For example, if I want the name, I will put that name. If I want the subtitle, I will put that details. Let's not talk about details. Uh, no, we don't have, we don't have subtitles anymore. We have 
contact array with a structure and it has all the details that I want. So instead of this, we will take this dot contact dot details. And for the image, instead of images, what do we do again? We use contact dot image. So that way, did we put photo or image? What did we define it as? Photo. So that way, instead of having three separate arrays, you have one array with this structure that contains all the details for you. And you just simply access these details from each structure. And the array that you get, it has, when we call this array, it has all the details that we need. All right? All the details that we need and to display. Now, if I run it, it will have worked in a similar manner and you will have everything that you need. Those are my four names that were in the structure. Is that clear? I will pause and then give you, let me just review again what we did and I will pause it so you'll understand. So to solve the issue with having multiple arrays with different purposes, we did, we created a Swifty class. In that Swifty class, we have all the attributes that we want. We have, if we only storing three information about the user, these are the attributes. Then we, instead of creating the array of individual elements, we create an array. We created a function that says, give me the context. This function give me, it returns an array. Inside that array, we have several contacts. All right. And then these arrays will be used, or this array with the, with the names will be used in the table view controller, which is here we get the array of contacts. And then in the, the only thing that will change is the cell for row. In the cell for row, we will say here it is the name, the details, and then the photos from the structures. All right. All right. This is the hardest part that we had to deal with today so far. But if you do this, the next topics will become easier. All right. I'll pause and give you a chance to finish this exercise.